For today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the idea of thirds. So quite simply, a third is just an irrational number. So what's an irrational number? An irrational number is any number that cannot be written as a fraction, right? They're usually numbers that have non-recurring decimals. So it's an irrational number in the form of the square root of some number. And that number is always positive. And also that number is never a perfect square. So let's look at some simple examples of thirds, right? The most simple third is the square root of two. We cannot convert it into a fraction and it would give a non-recurring decimal, right? Other examples are, for instance, the square root of five. We could have the square root of 12, right? These are all examples of thirds, positive numbers that cannot be converted into fractions after we've taken the square root. Now let's look at some examples of numbers that are not square roots or not thirds. Let's take the square root of nine. The square root of nine isn't a third because the square root of nine gives us a whole rational number of three. And so it's not considered a third. Right, other examples of thirds, right, as a collective term are things like this. Two plus the square root of five. Now, while the number two is not a third, when it's grouped together with a third, the term collectively is considered a third. Right? Other forms could be the square root of seven minus three. Collectively, that's a third. Or alternatively, we could have three minus the square root of two over five. Now, this part here, again, could be considered a rational number because it's just three over five. However, square root of two over five is not a rational number. And so collectively, this is called a third. Now, the important thing with working with thirds is when we are asked to calculate something called exact value. All right. When we give answers as thirds, this is exact value because exact value numbers have not been rounded or simplified. Right? So we get the exact value of the number we're interested in. Right, let's uh, consider some techniques with thirds. So just like uh, basic algebra, we can group thirds, right? We can treat them as constants and we can add thirds with the same uh, numbers together. So if we have the square root of 11, if we have six and we add another three, collectively this would be nine square root 11. And in the same sense, we, if we have the same third here, we can look at the coefficients in front and just like any variable, we can subtract in this case the two numbers. So we'll have three square root of seven. Right, and just like other forms of calculations, we can expand and simplify. So for this example here, we would first expand all the brackets out and get 20 minus four square root three in the one. And then keeping in mind, we have a negative two here. So we're gonna multiply by minus two, we'll get minus 10, right? So we're multiplying the number by the coefficient in front of the third, okay? Not the third itself. So we'll get square root three and then plus two because two negatives make a positive. Right, and from here we can collect like terms and simplify, so we will Collect these two together, we'll get 22. And we will collect the two thirds because they have the same number, right? They have to have the same underneath. And we can get minus 14 square root three.